Yes. Talk more about that. I'm joined by Jean Pascal van Ypersel, a professor of climatology and environmental science at the Université Catholique de Louvain. He's also a former vice chair of the IPCC, that's the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Thank you very much for joining us on France 24. Now, uh, this, uh, this um, disappointing summit, as it's been described by the UN chief himself, uh, comes at the end of a year in which climate change and the dangers associated it, with it have, have been in the news almost daily. Why did countries fall short? Well, it's hard to explain. It's probably a lack of vision because what's really at stake is the inhabitability of the only inhabitable planet in the solar system. And uh, the future is clearly with uh, leaving fossil fuel usage as quickly as possible, as the IPCC report last year has indicated. And many countries have still not understood, understood that, particularly developed countries who rely a lot uh, on fossil fuel. So it's indeed very disappointing. And I hope uh, that uh, COP26 in Glasgow next year will uh, compensate for that with much larger willingness to uh, act on climate change. Now, it seems that uh, governments failed to uh, come to some sort of agreement on this carbon trading scheme, which has been talked about for many, many years now. Um, in the end, Australia and Brazil uh, were the ones to hold up any real progress. Uh, what is the problem with this system and why are those countries opposed to it? Well, it's essential that such a system, the principle of which has been agreed in the Paris Agreement, uh, is, uh, is, is um, uh, environmentally integer. So that means there is no, for example, double counting of uh, emission reductions uh, in a country funding an emission reduction and in the country where the emission reduction takes place. And uh, so the rules uh, that accompany such uh, carbon trading are very important. It's very important that the rules are clear, guarantee the environmental integrity of uh, such trade. And uh, it was better to delay uh, the approval of the, the rules until they are really clean and ready to um, uh, produce the effects uh, wished. Has the... U.S. pullout of the Paris Climate Accords uh, made it inevitable that countries are now just determined to protect their own interests, even in spite of all the warnings we're getting? Well, it may have played uh, some role, but, uh, you know, all the other countries have clearly said up to now they want to stay, to stay in the Paris Agreement. So it's only one country was announced it wanted to leave. The rest of the world is very much committed to uh, achieving the goals of the Paris Agreement. And uh, I'm not sure it has it had such a large influence. Uh, many, many countries are still uh, committed to the um, goals of the Paris Agreement. So do you see any positives at all? Are we on the right path, even if we're travelling down that path slowly, then perhaps we should be? I wouldn't say we are so well on the right path. We are a bit uh, on the side of the right path. And I hope we, do, we come back on the right path in the coming uh, few months and, and, and year because it's urgent. I mean, the, the CO2 and the other greenhouse gases are accumulating in the atmosphere. And therefore, the extreme events which are causing so much suffering, uh, like, you know, the wildfires in Australia, the floods in many countries, etc., are... Um, becoming more frequent. So it's urgent that the world understands that much more needs to be done to go to a, a zero emission uh, world, uh, a world without usage of fossil fuel. Jean-Pascal Van Ypersel, thank you very much. You're most welcome.